Everybody, this is Gary. Today is um, Wednesday, April 8th, 2020. It is 4.19 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the United States in Rochester, New York. And I just wanted to do a quick video about psychiatric emergency rooms during the COVID-19 coronavirus crisis. I see a lot on television, on news, on YouTube, on the internet, a lot of praise for uh, healthcare workers, nurses, and doctors, even the people who clean rooms and hospitals, um, anyone who works in healthcare who has to deal with COVID-19 and be exposed to it. They are heroes. They deserve to get credit for that. Um, they work hard, putting their lives at risk of possibly getting affected with COVID-19, and certainly they're heroes. I just want to acknowledge that right now. But there's a group of doctors and nurses that don't get enough credit. And I'm talking about doctors, nurses, cleaners, anyone who has to work in the emergency department of a psychiatric hospital or the actual inpatient, inpatient units that have people who are hospitalized already. The psychiatric nurses and doctors that work in the psychiatric emergency room are dealing with chaos. I can tell you that virtually at this point in time, any psychiatric emergency room in the United States is probably total fucking chaos. It's not the fault of the psychiatric nurses. It's not the fault of the psychiatric doctors. It's not the fault of the hospitals. Um, it is the fault of people who have closed hospital beds and whole, closed whole hospitals over the past 30 or 40 years that have led to a huge shortage of psychiatric beds. And this has caused a backlog in the emergency departments. I can tell you right now, even though I haven't been there a while since this COVID thing started, this COVID-19, the psychiatric emergency room at the University of Rochester, Strong Memorial Hospital, Rochester, New York, is in total fucking chaos. And the psychiatric nurses there, the psychiatric technicians, the psychiatrists themselves, the psychologists, the social workers, the people who clean rooms, do environmental services, they are all putting themselves at risk as much as any other doctor or nurse or a healthcare professional. They're dealing with an influx of psychiatric patients who sometimes, at least at the University of Rochester, Strong Memorial Hospital, Though there are no beds in the psychiatric emergency room because it isn't designed for people to stay there a long time, a long time, but they are staying there in a long time. What ends up happening is there's a backlog of patients with people sleeping in chairs, on couches, in geriatric chairs, um, in regular chairs, because there's no place to lie down. I mean, unless you want to lie down on the floor. So I can guarantee, without even being there, the University of Rochester Strong Memorial Psychiatric Emergency Department, also known as CPEP, is overcrowded. Patients are waiting 10, 12, 24 hours before they even get to talk to a psychiatrist or a social worker to decide if they need to be in the hospital. And the nurses and the doctors are dealing with total fucking chaos, emotional stress beyond belief. The danger is that since psychiatric emergency rooms are crowded, that's just going to help spread COVID-19 and coronavirus among the patients and staff that have to work in psychiatric emergency, emergency departments. So psychiatric emergency departments may not be set up to deal directly with COVID, but they couldn't possibly know who is infected and who's not infected when they're brought up to the psychiatric emergency room. If they're showing no symptoms and there's no reason to believe that they're infected, they're probably not getting tested. They may be carrying it, and that puts everybody at risk. And so I just wanted to point out that the psychiatric doctors and the psychiatric nurses and the psychiatric technicians and the cleaners, anyone who has any role to play in working in the psychiatric emergency department, they are heroes. They are uh, special people who are above and beyond the call of duty. They are strong they are powerful personally, they are courageous, and they've got to be given credit for dealing with an impossible situation. 
just use your imagination of what a psychiatric emergency room would look like. People who are hearing voices, people who are paranoid, people who are suicidal, people who are potentially violent, and then you get an idea of what kind of chaos can ensue when you shove 10, 20, 30 people together, each with a psychiatric problem unrelated to the other people in the unit. They all have their own individual psychiatric problems, therefore not getting along with each other, not getting along with staff, a lot of yelling, screaming, swearing, a lot of people being strapped down, being put into seclusion, which happens all the time. Um, and the psychiatric nurses and the psychiatric doctors and anyone else involved working there are under incredible stress. They have to sort out all the different psychiatric cases to decide who should be in the hospital and who should not be in the hospital or doesn't need to be in the hospital. And the criteria they use, since so many hospital beds are closed, is if you're suicidal or violent, potentially violent. Those are the only two criteria that let you into the hospital. If you can't take care of yourself, if you're homeless, but you're not violent or suicidal, they're going to let you go back out into the streets. They have no choice. Um, and even if you do, do get admitted into the hospital, for example, at Strong Memorial Hospital, you may not have a bed available, which means you're going to stay in the psychiatric emergency department even longer, possibly days, waiting for a bed to come. So you can actually go into the hospital itself, the hospital proper, and be in, uh, a patient in the regular psychiatric unit. The regular psychiatric units, once you're admitted up there, tend to be a little bit quiet, a little bit more peaceful because you're not having a constant influx of new patients and overcrowding and waiting to see the doctor. Um, in the uh, actual psychiatric hospital itself, where you've been admitted into the hospital, that's usually a little bit quieter. But still, those psychiatrists, psychiatric nurses, psychiatric te technicians, the cleaners, they're also under strain too. It's not easy to work in a psychiatric department, and it's certainly not easy to do that when you're worried about COVID-19 and coronavirus. The patients in the psychiatric unit are sort of closely packed together. They each have their own bedroom, they each have their own bed, um, but it's hard to keep 30 patients six feet apart from each other when the unit is only so big. Um, so the only way to really have social distancing in the hospital is if each patient voluntarily stays in their room. Um, you can't have them stay in their room 24 hours a day. They would go crazy. That would cause chaos, and that's not workable. So I just wanted to give a shout out to all the psychiatric nurses, psychiatric technicians, the psychiatrists, the psychologists, the social workers, the cleaners, the janitors, Anyone who has anything to do with working in a psychiatric unit or a psychiatric emergency department, you're under a great deal of stress, a great deal of anxiety, and you are all heroes. So if you like that video, subscribe, share, definitely share, comment. Um, and if you want to be sure that you're getting notifications when I put a new video out, just... Um, make sure you press the notification bell because even if you're subscribed, you might not know that I put out a new video unless you turn down the notifications at that little bell icon below the screen here. I believe it would be on the right side of your screen. Um, so that's all for now. Like I said, share, share comment, like, subscribe. Um, I don't ask for money to do these videos. I have no need to because I have an income and I can make these videos pretty much without charging anybody or asking for donations. But please, if you do want to help me out, just share this video with others. Leave comments about other videos, topics you would like to see, and I will make those videos. Um, I'm always open to new topics. I don't want to talk just about psychiatric problems all the time. Um, so I've tried to expand my videos beyond that. Um, but during the COVID-19 crisis, I can't avoid doing videos about the stresses and strains on people when they have a mental illness on one hand and they're isolated because of COVID-19 on the other. 
and they're under emotional stress like everybody is, but they're also dealing with psychiatric problems. I can't totally avoid making videos on that subject because it's important. But definitely share my videos on your social networks, your social uh, sites, and uh, leave a comment about any new subjects you'd like me to do a video on. Um, be safe, social distancing, and be careful.